So CN99 has been studied forever. It's a glycosylated uh, carbohydrate and protein uh, that's both free-floating and tissue expressed in pancreas cancer. About 85% of people will have a detectable level of CN99. And for some, it's a reproducibly reliable biomarker that corresponds to the course of the disease. So if their cancer is responding, the CN99 typically is declining and declining significantly. However, there are others where it does not correspond to what's happening to this with their disease. And sometimes, frankly, it's misleading in terms of the direction. So we always have to keep an open mind, and I would say, that making a decision on CA99 in isolation is, is, is really not something that we recommend, but interpreting it in terms of the totality of the evidence, in terms of the clinical picture, in terms of the radiology and the CA99 trend, I think that collective interpretation allows us to best understand how to use that information and what it means for that particular patient. We also have to remember that CA99 can be confounded by uh, benign processes such as pancreatitis and obstructive jaundice, so patient stents getting clogged is a classic way wherein the CA99 goes up and can go up sometimes tenfold over where it was. So again, have to, to be careful about the interpretation of what it means in those settings. So moving to albumin, serum albumin is an important biomarker. It's one that we look at, it's one that we follow. And people who are sick and symptomatic from their disease, we tend to see their albumin falling, uh, not just a reflection of the nutritional issues, but a, a reflection of the totality of the impact of this disease in terms of its metabolic uh, implications. And a low serum albumin generally, not exclusively, means a lower performance status, a higher burden of disease, and a more symptomatic patient. And in terms of clinical trial eligibility, albumin restrictions are present sometimes uh, because we want to make sure we give the treatment an adequate test and select out patients who may be on that downhill trajectory where we may not get a chance to fully utilize the benefits of a particular uh, combination. So albumin is, is useful. Uh, I wouldn't say at the end of the day it's a deciding factor in terms of one treatment choice versus another outside of a clinical trial, but it does contribute uh, to the collective thinking as to what may be the best approach for a given patient.